Greetings, dear ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Ivan Maltsev and I'm a general partner at 3X Capital. Uh, we are Web3 focused uh, VC fund. Um, I'm personally responsible for the uh, due diligence process in uh, our company and I'm managing the team of uh, investment analysts. And today we have a special guest, uh, Brian uh, from Sentiment. I'm truly excited to learn more from you, Brian, and discuss different uh, insights and trends that were happening during uh, this uh, crypto summer. Um, how are you, Brian, today? I'm great, Ivan. It's wonderful to be here and to talk markets with you here in early September. Uh, lots to uncover as we've been looking through some of the data here in crypto and trying to figure out exactly why we're seeing the pullback that we are right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm also quite uh, interested to, to learn more and see what uh, technological developments uh, have, has, have happened in your platform. So I'm, I'm really curious to, to see what uh, you guys were working on because we, we are using uh, sentiment for internal purposes, but also trying to share uh, with our community some educational uh, materials. And always it's nice to see your uh, progress. Um, so I will start with uh, the first question. Could you please provide uh, the overview of some key market performance indicators uh, that uh, have shaped uh, the uh, crypto landscape this summer? Sure thing. I'm sharing my screen now. Let me know that you can see this okay. Sorry, Brian, I do not see your screen uh, as of now. I will turn it on just a second and okay. probably, um, yeah, now we see your screen, it works. Perfect. Okay, so I wanted to start by looking at the past 30 days of price performances, just to get an idea of how things have been fluctuating, what Bitcoin looks like versus the many altcoins. And you can see down here, Bitcoin over the past 30 days is just barely up. It doesn't seem like it, but uh, just about one month ago from the day of this recording was the much larger crash, or at least the much sharper and rapid crash that occurred on August 4th and 5th. Uh, and we are just barely up on that, up 1.3%. You can see Ethereum is down 5.5%. Tuncoin is one of the biggest losers of the top 100 market caps down 17%. And then you have a few that have done very well. Of course, Tron with his, its new meme coin applicator up over 22%. Uh, a few others that have been performing well, Fetch, uh, as well as Sui, Ave, and Helium here up a whopping 74%. So there still have been many success stories and uh, assets out there that have been able to carve a name for themselves despite the very choppy and volatile prices. This has not been a retrace that has been uh, basically a, a ton of altcoins being bled. Yes, there are many that are retracing and being impacted negatively due to Bitcoin's own drop, but several have been able to uh, do okay, meaning that the market caps overall in crypto aren't hemorrhaging quite as much as it may seem. And on the social volume end, we can see that almost everything is getting a higher amount of discussion compared to one month ago. So this is the past 30 days versus the previous 30 days before it. And you can see, of course, Tron having a huge social volume spike of plus 163%. Um, there are a few that are getting less, Bitcoin Cash, you know, I see Bonk over here, a lot of struggling assets that have been underwhelming and under impressive are the ones being talked about less, but you can see the overall majority are getting much larger amounts of discussion. Now, if we go to another metric for looking at how much people are talking about crypto right now, we can take a look at something like 70K uh, to 75K versus, we'll go with 40 to 45K, as you would, uh, as you would suspect, these are the levels of discussion related to high optimistic prices from where we are now and uh, low pessimistic prices that people are fearful of. So this acts as a very good 
greed or fear metric for markets. And you can see how precisely the low and fearful number here correlate with the bottoms and the very greedy numbers up here correlate with the tops. So the latest was really this one here that called the top, the local top very well back on August 23rd. And then here, which called a very slight bottom before we started to see a little more sliding. Now, I think this is an, a bit of an anomaly which has been going on over the past week. You can see clearly the amount of red or 40 to 45K calls is actually up, but prices are still sliding a little bit. I would say all we need is one or two big spikes where people are really fearful of 40 to 45K and suddenly we bounce. Now, this isn't a perfect science by any means, but you can see just how much the correlation is evident over the past three months. And we can do this same exercise for years if we just go 15 to 20% above whatever the price was or 15 to 20% below the price was. So I'll stop there. Uh, I know I've been talking about a few different topics so far. What uh, what other subjects have you and your team been eyeing at the moment? Sure, this is super insightful regarding social uh, media um, metrics. Uh, we also see a lot of uh, interesting um, insights from our investors and from our community as we communicate. Uh, so when the uh, price goes down during the summer, investors try to avoid uh, any possible uh, opportunities. But from my point of view, of course, it's not a financial advice. I can be mistaken. Uh, during these periods of time, we should be focused and we should keep an eye on some interesting on-chain metrics that uh, I would like to discuss today with you as well. And of course, social metrics. So I see that... Uh, um, the uh, market downtrend is correlated with the interest of community to, to the crypto. Do you also see this type of uh, correlation based on your uh, social metrics? Yeah, to clarify, you're talking about the correlation with the equities markets right now? Um, I'm more about um, social media trends and um, behaviors. Um, correlated with uh, the Bitcoin uh, downtrend and with altcoins uh, downtrend. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Okay, one thing we can measure at would be the overall social volume related to Bitcoin and the weighted sentiment metric that we have. Uh, this is the weighted sentiment metric. And as you can see, we were getting a lot of greed. Anything above this zero axis means there's a little more greed and optimism toward Bitcoin than usual. Anything below means there's a lot of fear. So from May all the way up until July, we were actually getting quite a bit of fear. And then right here, when it suddenly flipped and people got optimistic, suddenly we see a local top and it starts to be a bit of a roller coaster, which has resulted in us getting pretty close back to where we were back in early August or early July. We're not quite there yet, but I think right now we really want to be able to start to get fearful once again. If the crowd is starting to express concern over us getting back to 50K or below 50K Bitcoin, that's going to reflect as a positive sign for all of crypto because it means that those small retail traders are selling off their bags. You can also see here in the total amount of holders category, there hasn't been a lot of rise. There was a bit here in mid-August. It's actually a good sign when we're flattening out or people are dropping their small Bitcoin wallets. It means they're going toward whale wallets. And that's what this chart is. It's one of my favorites. And it's measuring the total amount of Bitcoin held by all of the collective wallets that hold 10 or more Bitcoin. And the three month trend has been very strong. Uh, mm -hmm. While all of this volatility has been, been happening, <clears throat> you can see the 10 plus BTC wallets have added a little over 34,147 Bitcoin during that time for a 0.21% increase 
which may not sound like a lot, but it's actually quite healthy. We can go back in time here. Whoops, not all time, but we'll do the last year. I'm going to full screen this, take off the axes limitations for a moment. You can see over time, yeah, they're pretty much always accumulating in some respect, but the times that they get are the times when the price has a little bit of struggle, such as right here. Now, I like, I, I, I'm most, um, I should say, uh, I'm most worried when it's climbing rapidly, the flatness and when it's going down is actually when prices are rising because the FOMO is tempered and they're out of uh, new, very small retail wallets that are benefiting. It's the whales that are benefiting most when these wallets are going down over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly agree because at some point the small wallets start to liquidate their positions and uh, sometimes realizing significant losses and probably right. whales are just um, taking back the coins and increasing uh, their portfolios. But it's quite interesting to, to see that uh, the amount of uh, 10 plus BTC wallets went up uh, more than uh, actually 20%. Uh, you mentioned around 30% growth in the amount of wallets. Am I right? The amount of whale Bitcoin wallets or just overall? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So over the last mm -hmm. year, year it, it was 0.23% three months, but over the past year, it's climbed by 1.51%, which mm -hmm. over the course of history, of course, you're not going to see a 10% rise. Mm -hmm. um, but this is this is the overall amount of uh, the Bitcoin supply. So this is a 1.51% increase in their total Bitcoin holdings, not the MAD addresses. And over the past year, they've added 241.24K more Bitcoin collectively wow. when combining all less BTC wallets, which yeah, is many billions of dollars. I won't do the math. Yeah. <laughs> Understand. Uh, interesting. Um, I'm, I'm curious to learn more about the influence of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETF. Maybe you can, can share your insights on both. Uh, especially sure. during the summer, because Ethereum Spot ETF, I think, was launched uh, in June, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it was in June. Uh, I can look at something like Bitcoin ETF. These are these are search queries for how often these decks are coming up on social media. I'll do two things. Um, Bitcoin ETF or BTC, that'll be one topic. And then we'll do the same. I'll shortcut it here, copy paste, and then we'll just switch these to Ethereum and ETH. And we'll put these on a shared axis here. So if we go back just a full year, all the way back to the Bitcoin ETFs that launched in January, uh, which was right here, you can see the initial impact of the Bitcoin ETFs was actually a, a market top. The green line is, of course, Bitcoin's price, not Ethereum's. We can switch to Ethereum's in a moment. But mm -hmm. in terms of Bitcoin ETFs, you can see the initial reaction was about three weeks of retracing, two weeks of retracing, I should say, followed by a, a giant bull rally, uh, basically the resumption of the bull rally that started back in mid-October. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, we hit that all-time high. Uh, the, of course, the mentions of ETFs were starting to wane a little bit here. And then we kind of had some chopping and a little bit of a gradual decline, and then a rally. And then look at this, right around the top, a couple weeks before, but right around the top is when we get the initial... Um, surge of Ethereum ETF excitement as it is announced they're going to be launched. And then I believe it was right around here, if I'm not mistaken, late mid-July when we had the Ethereum ETFs and we get another local top. So you can see there's definitely a buy the rumor, sell the news impact here where people get very hyped 
when they hear about the ETFs and then when they're actually launched, this was the hype cycle for Bitcoin ETFs. And then this was the actual announcement and the official launch of them. When they're announced, we often see a letdown because the price from a theoretical perspective is already getting baked in to the reaction of, of what prices should be like with the existence of ETFs, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's super insightful because we in the future can um, use the rule, as you mentioned, sell, sell the news, um, at least fixing a part of our portfolio um, on, on the announcement in, in this specific uh, asset. Uh, because later we can see some uh, downtrends. I, I remember the Bitcoin ETF uh, launch um, and the performance of Ethereum. Uh, do you remember, Brian, when uh, Ethereum started to uh, to grow and uh, BTC was uh, was falling, as you mentioned, during the coming few weeks? Yeah, I think you're talking about a couple of weeks after the launch, right? Because Ethereum had a, a much more clear surge that was just nothing but uh gaining 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 while bitcoin was a little more choppy is that what you're referring to or maybe you can tell me what time range it was uh, I, I think it was uh, at the day when the uh bitcoin spot etf was launched uh so i saw how how ethereum was performing quite well and i i sold a part of my uh positions on ethereum yeah, I mean, just eyeballing this, it went from 2200 on January 22nd to a peak of about 4066. So it almost doubled over these next, uh, call it seven weeks, whereas Bitcoin went from 38K to 73. I, I don't see too big of a difference, to be honest. We can, we can precisely calculate if we do, uh, let's see. I'm just going to put the prices of both on the same axis here. Mm -hmm. So if we go to January 23rd, I'm going to hold down shift and you can see at the top left of my screen, mm -hmm. the comparison of both, it was actually Bitcoin that benefits benefited slightly more. Um, you might be, I mean, the, the one time I remember that was clearly Ethereum outpacing Bitcoin was between May 14th and the 22nd. I believe this was due to the hype over the Ethereum ETFs likely to be approved. And that's where we saw Ethereum go up 36 percent and Bitcoin was only up Bitcoin. Bitcoin was only up 13.6 percent. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um... And the second um, insight that you wanted to share with us regarding um, spot ETFs? Um, the other thing we can do, if you give me a moment, I'm going to pull up our ETF dashboard. Mm -hmm. And what this will do is show us the overall uh, volume of the top ETFs and uh, also some of the inflow data as well. So I'm just going to refresh a few of these charts. Mainly what we want to look at is the overall performance in terms of top ETF volume. And that is this graph right here. So pulling this up, you can see that obviously the peak Bitcoin ETF volume was happening back here in early March. And it has been kind of choppy ever since. I'd argue that it's been on a pretty notable decline uh, ever since April when it was starting to drop off. We're still getting plenty of volume, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is just combining the top seven ETFs. Uh, yesterday was $1.3 billion worth of volume. So it's still seeing plenty of action. But if you compare it to the peak here on March 4th, where it was $11.12 billion, yeah, it's dropped off, you know, something like 800 to 900% in volume. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious to know and to, to understand on, on the, from your point of view, from your data, uh, who is dumping the market. So, of course, everyone saw 
some insights about Jump, uh, Crypto and few other players. But uh, what type of uh, players are selling right now? Um, and um, when they will uh, uh, lose their positions, um, at least the majority of their positions, how do you think? Yeah, so it is good news uh, in terms of who the dumpers are. If we just combine the two smallest tiers, uh, the 0 to 0.01 BTC wallets here in blue, you can see that they've dropped about three and a half percent of their coins just in the past three-ish months or so. So they're dropping to the sharks and whales who we saw earlier are, dec are uh, accumulating right now. If we go a little further up, so the 0.01, the 0.1, these are more of like the uh, small wallets, but not micro. And they're actually accumulating pretty heavily right now. One to 10, these are kind of like the dolphins and, and the smaller sharks. They're kind of staying flat at the moment. And then you can see clearly the 100 to 1K wallets are just surging in uh, accumulation right now. 1K to 10K, a little more choppy. 10K to 100K going very much down. Uh, but you can see the 100K, look at this, like the amount of 100K, amount held by 100K to 1 million, they've added 24.3% more of the supply uh, or yeah. of their uh, existing coins in the past uh, two and a half months. Can we make uh, the conclusion here that uh, right now the small micro wallets are uh, selling during the past uh, few months and uh, yes. whales, uh, and few major holders who, who have um, 100,000 plus BTC, they increase their portfolio around 20%. That's correct. I, I would even go as far as to just combine the 10 or more BTC wallets. If you mm -hmm. look at uh once again zero to point oh one mm -hmm. so since their peak back in january about uh, almost six months ago they've dropped 5.6 percent of their holdings whereas if we just merge 10 or more Since that same time, how about exactly eight months ago, January 5th, they've added a modest 0.31% of mm -hmm. the supply. Uh, but especially in terms of absolute values, it looks a little bit better. Because then we can see, including all of the mined Bitcoin, you can see this blue line here. Mm -hmm. Since uh, the start of the year or so, they've accumulated 185,260 Bitcoin. And that's the most encouraging stat, in my opinion, uh, because price tends to follow this blue line quite strongly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is super insightful. Thank you, Brian, for uh, sharing with us. I'm also curious to understand better um, the trends that are currently exist in the market. Of course, we had uh, the beginning of the summer with a lot of meme coins, uh, grows, uh, new launches, and everyone were writing about it. Uh, right now, I see that the trend uh, in investment community is changing, and probably um, we can see similar from social uh, media metrics. Uh, so if you can share um, this data as well. Yeah, one chart that I've I've increasingly enjoyed checking out is the uh, amount of social dominance from different sectors. Uh, there's four different lines fluctuating on this chart, and that is the social dominance of the top six coins of layer in the layer one department, then the layer two department, meme coins, and then AI and big data, which of course we see this huge anomaly here uh, around the 23rd and 24th. But if we just take a look at each individually, you can see the most talk that layer ones were having, especially Bitcoin, of course, which is leading the way. Uh, they were getting the most hype here in late June and maybe any time between late June to mid July. 
and then there has been kind of a drop down in discussion. Meanwhile, layer twos, they were getting, of course, the most hype uh, in mid-July, and they've kind of dropped off. There was a resurgence in interest in mid-August, and it's dropped off. But meme coins, this is probably the most interesting because they correlate so much with market tops. This one being a very obvious one here in late June, early July. Tons of people talking about, you know, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu. Anything in the top six is included here. Uh, and then AI was just this perfect top signal. Yes, I think a lot of people believe that AI crypto assets have a good long-term future. But um, for now, when you start to see a lot of, of discussion toward AI and big data, just as we see with meme coins, it often correlates with a top as, it, as we saw here. If we got rid of this anomaly and just go before it, it might be more clear, but there's other tops as well. Like right here, these were great signals that we were getting close to a top due to market greed. So if we just look at meme coins and AI and look at how they correlated with market tops, this is of course the most obvious one. And then there's a very recent one right here that also correlated with a top. So it looks like it looks like we need to keep these two lines low as a good signal for markets to rise once again. If you start to see huge spikes in meme coins and AI big data, that's when it's clear that the crowd is getting a bit greedy and uh, straying away from the big large caps that often drive markets upwards of course bitcoin and ethereum being the most obvious mm -hmm. understand and what uh, what do you think about uh, other narratives like uh, real world assets and uh, decentralized physical infrastructure uh, our community is um, discussing these two narratives a lot uh, during the summer uh, do you think uh, there might be some uh, growth in terms of social media discussions as well. Yeah, um, I think these are a little more niche. Um, real world assets have, of course, been a popular topic in particular in 2024. If we look at the social dominance over time for real world assets, um, let's see what we find. Let me add and assets so it's as clear as possible. <clears throat> So over time, you can see times where it's spiking. And actually, very recently, uh, on September 2nd, is where we saw a big social dominance spike for real world assets. And it doesn't look like they're correlating with bottoms. They're actually correlating more with tops. Again, I think anything that is straying people's interests away from Bitcoin and Ethereum tends to be closer to a top unless we're in like a flat out bull market, which we're not right now, obviously. We've been declining since early March or mid-March when we hit that all-time high. And right now it looks like social dominance is quite high toward real world assets. If we back it up a little for comparison, we probably should see how real world assets have risen overall as a topic of interest. Um, it's hard to measure before, no, actually this should be okay. Um, I know that there was an API change in, in summer of 2023 and Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter slash X changed a whole lot of things. But yeah, there was this sudden rise in interest in March and it's kind of fallen back down. Oh, there we go, now it's refreshed. So yeah, you can see the, the rise overall since September of, of 2022 compared to now, it's very, very obvious that there's more and more social volume. So the crowd is clearly getting more interested overall. And you can even break it down by platform. Telegram is a bit all over the place. You can see how much Reddit has risen in interest toward real world assets over the past two years. Twitter as well. You can see there's kind of a pattern here where it drops down during the as the bear market started to commence 
before the rise in mid-July, there was just a decline and now it's bouncing back up again. 4chan, not a ton of interest over time. Bitcoin talk, not a ton of interest. Farcaster is definitely <clears throat> getting a rise in interest overall. They're a recently added platform. So we don't go back two years for Farcaster, but we do have the past four to five-ish months or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's obvious, especially from Reddit, that there's a lot more discussion here over time for real world assets. Is uh, the situation with Deepin similar to what we see here with uh, real world assets? With what? Sorry? Uh, with Deepin, uh, you, you already have uh, Deepin uh, here as a category, I see. Oh, Deepin, got it. Yeah, so if we look at Deepin, let's just take yeah, the last two years is fine. Uh, huge drop off in, okay, so this was due to the API change, so I can't include that. We'll just look at the last six months. And the biggest rise happened here in early July uh, when we were really dropping off. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing a recent spike just in the last couple of days. Maybe you know something about why. I'm not as familiar myself. Do you know? Mm, no, I, I do not think so. Um, maybe it was connected to different uh, node sales that were happening uh, in the market, uh, in deep in sector, but I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's certainly possible. But yeah, we are starting to see a resurgence in that discussion uh, about physical decentralized infrastructure. So. I'd keep an eye out for it. Uh, there's definitely a big spike on Telegram just in the past 24 hours, actually. Uh, Twitter, a very small spike as well. But yeah, it looks like this is mostly being powered by <clears throat> an increased amount of Telegram discussions. Mm -hmm. Understand. Uh, and also, I see you, you were uh, researching airdrops. Uh, you already have uh, the uh, topic. Uh, here, maybe you can also comment on it because we had few big launches uh, this summer. Uh, Layer Zero, zk Sync, Blast, a few other um, blockchains uh, launched their tokens. Uh, do do you think there is still a hype in uh, airdrop farming, or it it went significantly down during the summer? Yeah, very little from what we can see. Airdrops are kind of like meme coins in that they're a, a reflection of greed um, and overall hype in uh, holding more speculative assets for the purpose of getting niche rewards. Uh, and right now, airdrops have dropped off significantly in interest uh, ever since the hype that happened right before this drop off. Uh, you'll often see spikes in, in airdrop interest right before uh, prices fall. And at the moment, there's very little hype because people are just in a sour mood. Uh, there has been more and more negativity and uncertainty in the markets as prices have fluctuated the way they have more negatively than positively. So I wouldn't expect for airdrop hype to pick up until overall crypto markets do again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can agree with this expectation, but I also think that many people were truly disappointed due to uh, the performance of the last uh, airdrops and they probably decided to switch or maybe change uh, the uh, industry. Um, but of course, there will be many players who will stay here for, uh, for a while, but um, unfortunately, there are not so many people who benefited from, from the uh, lost, uh, last launches uh, significantly, I mean. So the, the layer zero airdrop was not uh, truly successful. I was one of the most, uh, like one of the earliest users uh, of uh, Stargate, uh, their uh, platform, where I did a lot of bridges. I put it, some liquidity into the platform. Um, the results uh, from, from my perspective were just uh, 100 or something uh, zero coins. Um, so it's, uh, it's around $300 or something. Uh, for a user who was uh, um, managing liquidity, bridging it and providing uh, it to the platform as liquidity provider, I do not think it's a significant amount of uh, tokens. Uh, but there are thousands of people who were disappointed with uh, 
uh, the airdrops. Uh, I personally think that uh, the criteria were quite uh, biased and fair, but uh, um, the results are um, not acceptable by the community. Gotcha. Yeah, that's understandable. And uh, it probably is being factored into this overall search of airdrops right now. The, the disappointment has led to uh, a little more silence toward the subject overall. Yes, yes, but uh, still we were expecting many token launches uh, during this autumn. Uh, many projects uh, delayed, uh, and I think that was uh, the right decision during the summer. Uh, better to delay the launch um, due to the not so many people are active and big investors like Wales, they, they do not uh, really like make important decisions during the summer. They try to actually uh, do some um, yachting or just relax with family. Um, but th this is quite interesting to, to discuss the topic of airdrops. Um, I would like to uh, switch a bit because our community is more on, on the investment side in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Maybe you can share some other uh, favorite uh, charts about uh, on-chain metrics uh, for for Bitcoin. I, I truly loved uh, the previous one with uh, the wallet dynamics. Uh, maybe Nupal or or some others. Um, just curious to see what we have here. Sure. So these are the last six months of some on-chain metrics here for Bitcoin. We can see that the transaction volume has kind of settled down. Uh, it's not doing anything too special at the moment. Volume is also quite steady, but not rising. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as far as address activity, so this is the overall amount of unique addresses that are interacting on the network. And it's been pretty flat overall, not anything to be too excited about. The 30 day trend line actually shows that we're, we're definitely on the decline, which is not the best of news. Circulation, same thing. It's really starting to come down. Generally, we want to see circulation and address activity rising over time as a sign that the network is expanding and becoming more active. And that's not quite the case at the moment. What is a good piece of news is the fact that the 30-day MVRV, so average trading returns, are at negative 6.2% for any wallets that have been active in the past 30 days. Mm -hmm. That generally means that we are in a less risky time in buying or adding more to our positions compared to the historical average time. Mm -hmm. And then 365 day active addresses are down about 2.6%, which is quite rare to see us in negative territory because most of the past year, this is the last six months, but you can see comparatively to early March, uh, average traders on the long-term perspective were up a whopping 70% at one point which was of course a good top signal. Average trading returns always hover around 0%, no matter what the time frame is. So the fact that the 30 and 365 day MVRVs were so high meant we were likely getting very close to a top because of how overheated the average wallet was in terms of profit. So now we've settled down. We actually went very negative in early August and now we're semi-negative here in early September. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I see. Funding rates pretty flat at the moment. A little bit of a, a boost yesterday. People were longing a little bit, but overall it's kind of just fluctuating between a little bit of longing and a little bit of shorting. People are afraid to get too extreme for Bitcoin right now. Overall whale activity is down, um, especially million dollar or more transactions have come down significantly since March. So whales are kind of biding their time. We already saw that they are accumulating. Less transactions doesn't necessarily mean they're bearish or uh, they're selling. It just means they're they're holding and waiting for uh, some more volatility to become active again. Interesting. Um, yeah, after this, I'm curious to understand how uh, macroeconomical environment influenced uh, the trends uh, during the summer and what uh, events you expect uh, to, to see and influence the, the market during the coming months? Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have theories on that. I think the biggest would probably be the US presidential election 
as well as the Fed's decision about cutting rates at the next FOMC. I think the U.S. Uh, probably has the spotlight for the near future due to a few big decisions like that. Um, and of course, any government bans that may impact crypto, uh, more ETFs that are launched, such as Solana or XRP and others that have been speculated from the community, those would be the, the big um, sort of initiators of any future rallies or future dumps in my mind without knowing too much about the future. Of course, we still have wars going on, uh, Russia, Ukraine, as well as Israel-Palestine conflict. These are, these are the kinds of things that uh, major, major news could have uh, some, some swings in the markets. You know, if COVID comes back with a, a massive surge all of a sudden and catches the world off guard, that can have an impact, kind of like we saw in early 2020. But th that would kind of be my summary. Mm -hmm. Truly agree with you. Um, the, the last question from my side, what uh, new tools, um, maybe metrics, you developed during this summer? Um, as a user of sentiment, I'm always curious to explore. Uh, so if you can share something with us. Sure. I just talked about the new social narratives features in an article yesterday. Uh, I released this maybe 12 hours ago from the time of this recording. And we have this page called Alpha Narratives, which gives us an idea of which topics are gaining or losing steam compared to other top topics. Um, so we can see just from this screenshot, Bitcoin and ETF inflows. Uh, there's an explanation as to why they're being talked about a lot. And it's a really good way to grasp what some of the news cycles are and why uh, specific subjects are getting an increased amount of discussion at any given time. Uh, this article also goes over many of the topics that have been in the news over the past month, such as cat and whales, the institutional involvement and the price movements of TonCoin, one of the best performers of at least the first half of 2024. Um, the legal issues regarding OpenSea and the SEC, Serarium, Pepe, and many of the meme coins that have, getting, have been getting huge pump and dump cycles, Bitcoin mining and the regulatory concerns behind it, NFTs and uh, the digital art movement sort of related to the OpenSea lawsuit, AI-driven blockchain and smart contracts, of course, Pavel Durov's arrest, the founder of Telegram, crowd sentiment and overall market behavior. And it just explains a little more about how these different subjects can make the markets fluctuate the way that they do. So I, I recommend checking that out. And it goes over the new features on our social narratives page. Mm -hmm. If I open up the page here and give it a real time look, um, we of course have a crypto narratives chart right here, which looks at more niche topics and how they're fluctuating over time. Mm -hmm. This is the alpha narratives page that I screenshotted. And then you can, of course, look at trending coins here, which right now we see a, a huge surge in Polygon discussion. Uh, also SWC, social wallet coin. There's Matic once again. So POL and Matic both getting discussion ton coin there, number four. Uh, and it also shows you the bearish to bullish uh, mm -hmm. swings based on the crowd's sentiment toward it at any given time. Mm -hmm. We can also see similar for top 10 trending words and which hashtags or keywords are in the news right now. We see hacked here at number three. This is a very common topic when we're in a bear market and people are starting to FUD toward crypto. Uh, people talk about hack and security and uh, lack of trust toward crypto when they are uh, upset about price performance. There's a, a very obvious correlation there. Mm -hmm. So I recommend social trends as a great uh, constantly updating platform here that gives a lot of different insight as to what's happening in terms of discussions in the markets. Thank you, Brian. Uh, this was super insightful, uh, as as always. Uh, it was uh, my pleasure to 
uh, to have you with us today. Um, guys, if, uh, if you love the content, if you would like to deep dive into different uh, social media trends, on-chain metrics, I definitely suggest you to, to have a look uh, on sentiment. Uh, and read the articles. As Brian mentioned, there is uh, a new article with uh, some metrics overview and new um, features that uh, Sentiment just introduced. Uh, thank you, Brian, for joining us um, and looking forward to our next session. I enjoyed it, Yvonne. Thank you mu so much for having me and uh, shout out to your wonderful community. Thank you.